How, how long was y'all locked up before that? Three months. So you did three months on the inside. And that's where you was actually introduced to some of the pimps on the inside, to the pimping game? No, 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 no. That was much years later. You know, it was uh back when I was 19, I met a guy by the name of Pimp and Pope. And he was the biggest pimp in Milwaukee. And he was, he had got into it with this guy by the name of Pimp and Sam. So Sam jumped on his car and he shot Sam up off his car. And Sam was, Sam was eventually, he came a pit, 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 pit. A pair, whatever they call it, uh, he crippled paraplegic. Dude. Paraplegic, yeah. You know, it's on my mind. I just can't say it. So that uh led him in the cell with me, and so I asked him. I said, you know, man, you know, I had a bitch when I was sixteen. I tried my hand at pimp. I said, but what is this pimping thing really about? So he said, you know, and I said, he said, let me explain to you from this perspective why I'm in jail. I said, okay. He said, well, I had this broad named Juanita, and Juanita, you know. If I took a shit, she'd be there to wipe my ass. He said, if I put a cigarette in my mouth, she's going to bum her three times to light my cigarette. He said, if I it's my stomach raw, she's going to go and cook me something to eat. He said, I just had her under instruction. He said, and that's how a pimp is supposed to deal with hoes. You know, you keep them under instructions. So he kept talking about instruction, instruction, instruction. He said, but Sam had never encountered a situation where he was a pimp, but he never caught where a bitch was so in pocket. But bitch did everything that she said. And, you know, so he fell in love with all her, you know, her services, you know, and her humbleness and her bowing downness, you know. But she fell in love with that. And that's what made him want to go to war with Pippin Pope after she chose back up on him. Because he thought that she loved him, but she didn't love him. You know, she was just doing what she was taught to do as a, a, a woman that's in the game that was under instruction. So he said, Ken, there's no difference between the in-pocket bitch and the out-of-pocket bitch. He said, you treat all bitches the same. You know what I'm saying? Me? So that stuck in my head. And I used his philosophy and it made me a legendary successful pimp as he was. So I was basically living vicariously through him, but he was more flamboyant, more, you know, Willie Donamite type. I was more, you know, like a sophisticated Armani, you know, uh, Rolex, you know, more sophisticated type dude. But I... I, I kept his principles and I went to the doctor and I had a, a, a triple bypass. You know, I had all the sympathy removed from my heart. You know what I'm saying? And that was the game that he taught me, that this is a non-sympathetic game to win, you know. And, you know, no matter how beautiful a woman was or no matter how good, the, you know, the love and sex or whatever could be, we never, we never looked at that. We only looked at the bottom line, you know, get out there and give me some money. And, you know, that's how I became so strong, you know, I, I credit a lot of the game that I got from him in that cell that made me, you know, the person that I am in the game, you know, because a, a lot of times I could have fell in love with them bras. I could have been like Sam and I could have been, you know, a simp, you know, and, 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 and be in love with these bras and, you know, be, be mad when they leave. But when they left, you know, he told me when a bitch leave, give her a Chinese name, one gone, Su Wong, you know? So, you know, that was never the uh, issue with me. You know, and because of that, you know, I got a reputation in the streets for being a solid pimp, you know, and a lot of hoes, you know, that's what they're looking for, solidarity. They're looking for a nigga that ain't going to be, you know, trying to fuck them and trying to, you know, do all this all the time. And it's going to check his money and going to be staying on, on, on his business. And that's what my reputation became. Then a lot of the pimp niggas, you know, as I would travel across, across the country, I met other pimps. A lot of them talk slick. So my daddy now was always slick talker. So I was basically born with the slick side of me, you know what I mean? So I would talk a lot of slick shit and you know, niggas, they liked me. You know, I had been in the penitentiary. I was a Moorish American. I was part of the Moorish Science Temple. I was part of the Honorable Noble Jolie. So I had a little religious principles and a little, you know, more science with me too. So, you know, I was a leader. So a lot of the guys, the pimp guys, they liked me and we became good friends. And, you know, my name became legendary and all the pimps started respecting me. And, uh, you know, that's how I became Pippa Ken after HBO gave me the name. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.